Hello everyone. Many a time in engineering and science subjects, there are some students who feel that despite putting in a lot of effort, they still end up getting low marks. In this video, I wish to discuss some of the reasons behind this, share some tips with you so that you can perhaps overcome this and finally discuss what happens in the long term in these kinds of situations. So first of all, getting into the reasons. Well, there are some generic reasons like the innate examination temperament, the innate ability to sit in an examination hall and perform well. This is a question of nerves and something which has to do with perhaps a little bit of your own physiological response to stress uh, in a very time bounded fashion. There is not much that you can do to overcome this kind of a natural uh, instinct, so to speak. Uh, but we should not give up by saying this. Okay, there are a lot of other factors involved and I wish to discuss them in a little bit more detail. Another reason is that besides the examination temperament is that uh, you see when we are talking about uh, these kinds of examinations especially at the undergraduate level there is uh, whether you like it or not there is a bit of history involved in every student's academic trajectory meaning to say that there is uh, the question of how the student's brain has evolved uh, starting from his or her school days uh, how is her, uh, his or her uh, innate mathematical preparation because in many of the cases uh, this kind of a situation arises in more uh, of the problem solving oriented kind of questions uh, or question papers. Again uh, what has already happened in your academic trajectory you cannot do much about it of course you can try to take some corrective measures and we'll get into that. Now when we say these kinds of generic things it doesn't really help you okay so Beyond that, okay, regarding your current status, the current things that you can do and cannot do, what, what, what are those? So are there any reasons uh, in that uh, scenario? Well, yes. So my first and foremost and perhaps the most important point is that when you are thinking that you are putting in a lot of hard work, try to see, try to introspect a lot uh, whether that kind of hard work is perhaps actually a bit of a slog. What I mean to say is that perhaps you are doing, uh, I mean you are putting in a lot of physical effort, you are solving the problems again and again, uh, you are trying to match with the answers, uh, putting in a lot of uh, time into solving the problems as a result of all of this effort, uh, like literally putting in the toil and the tears and the sweat. Uh, but is this really hard work or is it just slog? I, I, I don't mean to be rude here. But see, uh, if for solving each and every one of the problems, maybe from some kind of a problem sheet or a tutorial sheet, or maybe even from the uh, end of the chapter exercises from your textbook, for each of the each and every one of the problems, the route that you are tra trying to uh, take is somehow apply the different kinds of formulas in a hit and trial basis, like a trial and error basis, and then trying to match with the answers somehow uh, without being really sure about what you are doing in each and every case. So that is not really hard work. Okay, you are just putting in the time and effort to do trial and error business. So what is really hard work? So hard work, real hard work would be even before you put pencil or pen to paper, think long and hard very very hard think very hard about what you have been asked to do what you can do and think and and in what way you can approach the problem so that at the very first go you can uh, arrive at the correct answer because without this what you are what you think you are putting in as hard work is only like i mean i'm sorry to say this but it is only like a proof that you are not being able to solve the problem at the first go. So time and again you are actually proving to yourself that you are not being able to do the problem at the first go. So if you are not able to do, the, do this uh, in, in a situation where there is no time pressure like when you are doing the problem sheets then how do you expect the things to go well in an examination environment, in an examination hall with the time pressure. That is never going to happen. Okay. So how do you overcome this? So as I said, 
you have to really think hard and long about the problem okay uh, maybe uh, after so so it can so happen that in the, in the initial days uh, you still do a little bit of trial and error and somehow manage to arrive at the answer but after you have somehow managed to arrive at the answer don't stop there and move on to the next problem slow down a little bit think why you were thinking in the wrong direction in the first place because without that training of your mind you are not going to be able to learn from your mistakes and that is absolutely important okay i cannot overemphasize this you have to analyze the mistakes of your thinking process after you have solved a problem somehow after you have managed to get the answer sometimes it can so happen that that you have managed to get the answer at the first go and you are feeling very happy about it even then i will suggest that you think a little bit about the problem analyze about other routes that you could have thought about but accidentally you did not think about you just happened to think about this correct direction and and try to see for yourself why those approaches other approaches would be conceptually wrong this is extremely extremely important because when you train your mind to do this you will uh, i mean your brain will be prepared uh, from uh, to 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 avoid these kinds of traps which sometimes the professors set in the question papers okay of of making the students think in the wrong directions just because of some wording in the problem or the way that the problem is presented so this is extremely important in another case what happens is that some there are some students who do manage to think in the correct directions without making any conceptual mistakes but they have a tendency to go into some kind of research mode while doing the problems meaning that they'll think in the right direction but while solving the problems they'll think about what could have happened if that was that what could have happened about that and and as a result in one problem they'll spend maybe 45 minutes or 50 minutes now that is good at the research level but you don't do that while solving problems in an examination so if that habit persists uh, of not respecting the time pressure when you uh so so that will carry forward during the examination hall uh, in in an examination environment also so you will have to develop that mental discipline of postponing those kinds of interesting and intellectual th thoughts uh, for later times like if you're really really wishing to do that first solve the problem in a time bounded fashion this is my big tip to you so first solve the problem like make a conscious effort to solve the problem in the time bounded fashion and whatever thoughts you have regarding the other directions that the problem could have taken you postpone it for later and as i said you you are you you must allow yourself that that uh, that time uh, to to analyze the problem so do that later postpone it for later but when you are solving the problems think in the right direction and do it in a very time bounded fashion as if you were uh, sitting for an examination and the thing is that unlike your coaching institutes where you you sat for many many mock tests here there is nobody to give you mock tests in an engineering or or a, or a science uh, class okay so you are all alone so you have to give yourself a like a situation of a mock test by yourself okay there'll there'll be no mock test okay the third reason is uh, sometimes the students do not end up performing well because uh, what happens is that they they are very consistent in their studies they study all throughout the semester maybe uh, but what happens is that in each of the chapters their knowledge is at a very shallow level they don't go into the in depth uh, i mean the nooks and crannies the nuts and bolts um, which on which points the professor sometimes tests the students so in each and every chapter if your knowledge is not too much in depth it's not like a, it's not penetrating into the heart and soul of the situation then in the examination hall uh, or in the examination uh, situation where the, in the question, question paper from each and every chapter there will be a little bit of a challenge so uh, maybe you will be able to solve the problems partially with your shallow knowledge but you will be uh, you will not be able to solve any of the problems completely because of the shallowness of your knowledge so i mean uh, one strategy could be that if you are finding it uh, short on time uh, then don't go into don't try to go into too much depth in all the chapters but at least whatever chapters you study go into proper detail and depth into that try to really really understand the heart and soul of the concepts 
okay shallowness in the knowledge is ultimately not going to help you next let us discuss the long term situation so what happens in these kinds of situations when uh, where students are putting in the effort but time and again they are getting low marks so we have broadly identified two categories of students uh, some uh, the first category being where there is a, an incorrect method of preparing from the problem sheets uh, and thinking about the problems and the other one is that where there is a certain slowness uh, embedded in the uh, in the problem solving strategy so my point is that you should not be feeling despondent or depressed by these discussions okay rather you should take uh, hurt from these discussions in uh, in identifying that yes so this is the problem that you have and this can actually be corrected all that you have to do is change your habits a little bit and mind you at this if if you are at the second year third year level even at the fourth year level it is not too late okay so uh, i mean people change their habits so late in life why can't you you are i mean in, in the in the broad scheme of things in the academic life you are still children okay so uh, take heart from that now i i want to uh, emphasize on two points regarding the long term things first and foremost you may be thinking that oh i am doing hard work but this is of no use uh, let me give up on that please do not your innate ability to do hard work is like a super power that you have do not give up on that okay see if you can correct your methods if you can correct the way of preparation the correct the way of studying then combine uh, with combined if you combine your super power of hard work which you actually have okay so so uh, that that toil and tears uh, so if you can combine that with the correct method of studying you will yourself be surprised by how much improvement uh, it will bring about next uh, next point is that it is quite natural that you may feel a little bit envious you are after all uh, flesh and blood uh, to see that some students who are apparently not uh, putting in the hard work getting much more marks than you who are outperforming you it is very natural so again do not lose heart the first thing to note here is that uh, even though it may seem that some of them are not putting the hard work but in reality some of them are actually putting in the hard work in the sense that how much penetrative thoughts they are putting in in, in the little time that they are studying and the other thing is that there are actually situations and i know this where st some students do manage to get very good marks despite not putting in the hard work as you may think but remember this at the very first years of study they may get by they may coast uh, by not putting in the hard work but there will come a transition time where no amount of talent no amount of natural ability can substitute for hard work okay this is not something theoretical i am saying i have seen this from my own case from my friends cases uh, from now that i have <laughs> become a faculty member i have seen the students cases also over the years uh, there is only uh, on this only up to certain stage in academics that you can progress without the hard work okay based only on talent after that it is absolutely absolutely necessary so that super power of hard work that you have if you preserve that it will it will bring you the benefits in the long term okay so please do not give up on that super power that innate super power that you have okay in the advanced stages of academics in the higher years of study it will be absolutely absolutely essential so on this positive note i will end this video all the very best on correcting your methods uh, and on performing well so much that you will be actually satisfied by the uh, consistency between the effort that you put in and the results that you get all the very best thank you